In this WrestleTalk news, there's rumors abound that Roman Reigns is not going to lose at WrestleMania next weekend. An update on where Carmella is after missing Raw, Goldberg to AEW confirmed, and more. Subscribe and enable notifications to Always On for daily wrestling news videos. Support WrestleTalk! Monday's Raw was brilliantly built around the very strong possibility that next weekend's WrestleMania will be the end of the Bloodline faction. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are teaming up to not only take on the Usos for the tag team titles, they're doing it with the intention of ending the Bloodline for good. Cody Rhodes' words cause some friction between Reigns and Solo Sokoa, and that same Cody Rhodes will face Roman Reigns for the Undisputed Championship and essentially laid out the Raw after Mania by saying that when Roman loses, he'll also lose Jay, Jimmy, and Solo. Not only that, but WWE released a new hideous t-shirt that literally has Cody Rhodes holding the American flag with Finish the story written on it, a tribute to the WrestleMania 7 poster, which is also quite terrible. It's not just one of the worst t-shirt designs in WWE history, who have a track record of awful t-shirt designs, it's also as subtle as a brick to the face, and really does spell out that Cody's picking up the big W at the end of Mania. He's got America on his side now! The Bloodline is a story that has been building in WWE since August of 2020, back when fans were only TV screens and we all just accepted that was totally fine and not weird at all. And Cody Rhodes' promo from Raw really did feel like we're in the end game now. The backstage segment with Reigns and Jay, where Roman said that he loved Jay but didn't get a response, also suggests that WWE have plans in place for the breakup of this group, with some speculation we could get Roman versus Jay Uso at SummerSlam. And according to WrestleVotes, that is when we will next see Roman Reigns. WrestleVotes claim that following WrestleMania, Roman Reigns is set to take a significant break from WWE. This would be pretty standard now anyway, as Reigns is on essentially a part-time contract with the company. He isn't doing regular house show appearances, and he's only contracted to be on a certain number of SmackDowns and pay-per-views a year. But WrestleVotes add, you may not see him until SummerSlam, which would be a four to five month period of time away from TV, a much larger amount amount than he usually misses. There are, of course, some caveats to that statement, however. WrestleVotes add when speaking with Give Me Sport that Reigns could be brought back when there's a major show that requires Roman Reigns. As we saw with John Cena when announced for the Christmas edition of SmackDown last year and his return to Raw a few weeks ago, there are very few legit needle movies in terms of ticket sales when added to the bill in WWE. And Roman Reigns is one of those few people. He was announced for a house show in Toronto earlier this month, and that announcement boosted ticket sales significantly. WWE also recently have had a string of successful sellout shows and pay-per-views, mostly when they've been built around the Bloodline story. As WrestleVotes put it, WWE wanted to make Roman Reigns a major deal, and they did. And now every time you put on a major show, you need a major star. So where does that leave us for WrestleMania? Because, it turns out, perhaps the call on who is winning between Rhodes and Reigns hasn't been made yet. WrestleVotes added to their quote given to Give Me Sports on Twitter by adding, I'm told this is contingent on if and when Reigns eventually loses the titles. As of now, those plans are not certain. So it is currently undecided on whether or not Romans is retaining or losing the belts next weekend. Further to this, Sean Rossap on Fightful Select noted talent that we've spoken to in WWE say that across the board, they haven't been informed of WrestleMania winners and losers. However, he also adds, this is common. And also common is not knowing what the finish might be at this point in time, as several WrestleMania finishes, including main events, have remained undecided until a few hours before the event. You would think that WWE would have finishes laid out as it would inform the next pay-per-view cycle and their results are not based on random chance like they are in my GM mode on WW2K23, which you can go and watch me and Pete play on Parts of Unknown, but that isn't always the case. This is, however, the first Triple H era WrestleMania, and as Dave Meltzer has previously reported, Trips isn't doing a lot of last-minute changes when it comes to key storylines. In fact, when talking about the Bloodline segments from SmackDown and Raw with his co-host Brian Alvarez on Wrestling Observer Radio, Meltzer said WWE have a year of post-mania plans when it comes to Roman and his faction, or perhaps lack thereof. And of course, there's always the chance that WWE will swerve fans and push forward with this idea that Roman is going to hold on to the belts for more than a thousand days, which he is currently 
by around 70 days away from. But what do you think? Do you think Roman is going to lose at Mania? Is Cody winning? Or will the tribal chief still hold all the gold? Let me know in the comments down below. One of the odder things from Raw was a backstage segment where Chelsea Green told Adam Pearce that, although she made matching gear for her, Carmella was not at the show and would be replaced by Pipe and Nevin. Mella and Green had been advertised over the weekend to face Bianca Belair and Asuka in a Can They Coexist tag team match, but Carmella was nowhere to be seen. The on-screen pairing of Green and Mella was reported to lead to them being part of the WrestleMania Tag Team Showcase match. So where was Carmella? Well, it turns out, no one really knows. Sean Rossap over at Fightful Select is reporting that Carmella was off this weekend's house shows and that the decision was made over the weekend to replace her on Raw with Piper Niven. Although Sapp adds that the on-screen partnership between Mella and Green is set to continue, he closes with, nobody we spoke to had an update as to why she was pulled from the house show loop or replaced on TV. Fightful also adds that Bobby Lashley was not ever listed to be on Raw this week, but he was backstage on the show on Monday night. He's been facing Baron Corbin on the house show circuit over the weekend, the lucky guy. But when he's back on TV, he may have some new faces around these places. According to Worked Wrestling on Twitter, who have had a couple of good hits recently in the Scoop Seas department, Bron Breaker and Cameron Grimes are set to be main roster mainstays in the months following WrestleMania. Breaker is set to defend his NXT Championship against Carmelo Hayes at Stand and Deliver before WrestleMania, and Grimes was recently photographed showing off his glow-up physique. But to throw some potential water on this rumor fire, however, Worked also reported that NXT's Grayson Waller was set to be on Raw this past Monday to be involved in the match between Johnny Gargano and Dominic Mysterio. As we now know, Waller was not on the show. Words noted on Twitter that plans changed throughout the day, but Fightful Select are reporting that Waller was never scheduled to be on the show in any shape or form. Sean Ross Sapp writes, we spoke to numerous sources at Raw that said that Waller was not brought in, was not involved in the creative plans, and was not set for the show in any capacity. He adds, the first the creative had heard of this is when they were asked if the rumors were true, which were quickly shot down. Speaking of Sean Ross Sapp, and he also reported via Fightful Select that Goldberg and WWE have parted ways. Goldberg's last match with WWE was at Super Showdown in February last year, crucially under the Vince McMahon man regime of WWE. Goldberg has not been on a Triple H show, and there have been no reports of him being brought in for the previous Saudi Arabia show, WrestleMania, or the Raw Anniversary show. Sap does note, however, that no deal to renew or extend was reached, so there was some interest from WWE for Goldberg to come back, and WWE might not be the only ones interested. AEW's Tony Khan was asked about the news that Bill Goldberg was now a free agent while on The Bet Las Vegas and Sporting Tribune, where he said, I have a a lot of respect for Bill. Medical Bill? I think Goldberg is a great professional athlete and has had a great career in pro wrestling and is a very nice person. He actually has a lot of ties around the Jacksonville community. He's a household name in pro wrestling and certainly that's interesting to hear that he's a free agent. It's something to follow and he's one of the biggest names in wrestling and certainly will be something else to keep an eye on for us. Goldberg to AEW confirmed? But for now, why not head on over to the WrestleTalk podcast channel to check out the latest episode of Worst Match Ever where we watch the truly awful ECW Elimination Chamber match from 2006. Here's a clip. One. Two, no, no. um, hmm, no. what happened? Um, uh, uh, okay, Bob, no, no, get out. What's going on? Uh, Bob's out now, He's you guys. Eliminated. My name is Luke Owen, and I love bad wrestling. Join me on my journey through a cavalcade of crapness, watching what many believe to be the worst wrestling matches of all time. To make my